In most cases, the morphs you get from Morph SVG plugin are beautiful and no tweaking is necessary. But today I'm going to show you the more advanced settings that may come in handy if you hit one of those uncommon scenarios where a morph just isn't looking quite right. The first scenario I want to discuss is when there is too much movement of subshapes. In this demo, you can see that each starting and ending shape has many different subshapes. Morph SVG must decide which subshapes in the starting path go with each subshape in the end path. It's a matching game and by default it sorts them by size, so the biggest shapes in the starting path go with the biggest shapes in the ending path. But if you've got a lot of shapes, it might look better to match them by position instead. Let me show you how that works. So let me just pause and I'm going to go back to where we have these squares or cubes if you will. So the default map is now set to size. So keep an eye on this top square right here and as I scrub forward you'll see that it matches up with this circle here in the microphone. What I'm going to do is change the default map to position and then I'm going to run again. I'm just going to pause and scrub forward to where we have these squares. So now with the default map set to position, notice that this top square here, when I scrub forward, doesn't travel as far and it goes right to one of these bars in the top of the monitor. And for something different, we can change the default map to be complexity. And now the next time I run, it's going to be a little bit different. So we'll just wait for it to run, I'll pause and keep an eye on that top box there. And now you'll see that it goes somewhere a little bit different based on complexity, okay? It actually ends up in the middle of that eye there. So the default map that you choose is really gonna depend on the style you're going for and what type of shapes you're morphing to and from. Let me just pause this real quick. And next I wanna talk about the default type, which basically means how the anchor points and control points are interpolated. Right now it's set to linear, which means that as the shapes morph to their end shapes, everything moves in a linear fashion. So just keep an eye on this top box right here to the top right, and you're gonna see that it moves sort of in an angle all the way down to the bottom left, okay? So everything is being interpolated linearly. But if we switch this over to rotational, there's going to be a rotation applied to the path that the anchor points and control points move. And if you keep your eye on that top box, let me rewind. So this top box now, you'll notice that it moves in an arc, all right? It's no longer moving in a straight line. So that's gonna apply to all the start subshapes and end subshapes. Their anchors and control points are gonna move in a more rotational fashion, which sometimes give you a smoother and more appealing look. So I'd encourage you to play with both the default map and default type and see what works best for you. In the next segment, I'll talk more about default type rotational. There are some scenarios where you might encounter some kinks in your morphs. Let's check out this demo here. You'll see that I have this hippo morphing into a circle. And as it's morphing, pay attention to these little lines over here, okay? What we're doing is tracing out the path that the anchor points are following as the morph is happening. And right now it's using the type of linear. So those anchor points are all moving in a straight line. Now at a cursory glance, this morph looks actually pretty cool, all right? You get a hippo morphing into a circle. What's better than that? But now I'm gonna pause and show you that this back leg here, as we move forward just a little bit, you're gonna see that you get this overlap, okay? So that's what we're referring to as a kink. And that's not really so good to look at, all right? So what I'm gonna do is show you that we can fix that using type rotational. I'm gonna click on the demo, and let me just pause it so it's not distracting. And I'm gonna click on rotational here, and we'll click again to hide the UI. And you'll see now that all the anchor points are following more of a rotational path, and it gets rid of that kink that we had in the back leg. It looks much, much better. Now there is a point, let me just scrub slowly here, where it gets a little bit bunched up here. It's not perfect, but it's so much better. But one more thing we can do is change the origin that the rotational values are being interpolated around. So let me click again to get the UI up here. And for the origin, I'm gonna use a custom value of 20% and 60%. And now when I hit return, let me just click off all this stuff, you're going to see that we have 
a much better morph back here, all right? So by shifting that origin around, we no longer have any of that bunching or the kinking of those lines. For more information on how type rotational works, head over to the Morph SVG plugin docs. We have a much more in-depth video there for you, and we also have all these demos for you to play around with. Next, I wanna talk about what happens when you get awkward in-between shapes. In this demo here, you'll notice that I'm using type rotational, but there's some weird stuff that goes on while the dolphin is morphing into the bird, all right? If you look at this fin here, it sort of goes up and crosses over, and you get this weird sort of intersection of lines. What I'm gonna do is initialize this code right up top here, which is gonna use the find morph origin utility function. When that's enabled, we're actually gonna have a tool available to us where we can change the origin of the morphs. So let me just wait until the dolphin comes back. And I'm just gonna take this origin, which is sort of sitting outside the shape right now, and bring it up to where its top fin is. And once I do that, you're gonna see that you have much less crossing over of those lines, and you get a much more natural, smoother morph. I'm gonna take this little point from the bird, move it down a little bit, and I want you to see that as I'm moving it, that we have in the GUI the actual origins of the start and end shape that you can then plug into your tween. Next I want to discuss how kinks can occur when the control points get out of alignment. In this demo here there is what seems to be a very simple curve morphing into another curve. Now if you pay attention right around here you're going to see a little bit of a kink show up all right you get kind of a hard corner here and it's really not so nice when all you want to see are nice smooth curves. So what I want to do is click on show handles and what that's going to do is show the motion of the control point as the tween is happening, okay? So as the anchor point in the center moves, the control points also have to move. And what you're going to see is that at some point they get out of alignment and you get this corner here. Scrolling back, when we start off, you'll see that these control points are aligned in a straight line and then you get a nice curve. But as soon as they get to an angle like this, that's when the corner is going to form and you get that kink. So by switching over to type rotational, that problem gets solved because those control points are now gonna move in an arc, keeping them always in perfect alignment. And then you're gonna see that all throughout the tween that this point right here is a nice smooth curve, all right? So that also gets rid of the kinks using type rotational. On rare occasions, you might have some bizarre twists, which you can solve by changing the shape index. Now, the shape index property allows you to adjust how the points in the start shape are mapped. In order to prevent points from drifting wildly during the animation, Morph SVG plugin needs to find a point in the start path that is in close proximity to the first point in the end path. Once that point is found, it will map the next point in the start path to the second point in the end path, and on and on and on. On the rare occasion that Morph SVG doesn't automatically pick the best shape index, you can load up the Find Shape Index utility, which allows you to manually select the shape index. Using this utility, I can change which point in the start shape is going to end up matching to the first point in the end shape. So I can go all the way around, and I might say, hey, you know what? I like that being the first point in the start shape. I see the shape index is eight, and then I can plug it into my tween. For more information on shape index, jump on over to the Morph SVG docs. So next I want to talk about performance. If you're doing really complex morphs on low powered hardware, you may notice some initial stuttering of your morphs. Now to get around that, we have a pre-compile property that you can set. But before I get into that, I want to just go through a list of things that Morph SVG needs to do before you can even start animating. First, it needs to parse both the start and end shapes into cubic bezier values. It also needs to make sure it has matching points in the start shape and the end shape. And if there's a mismatching number of points, it needs to subdivide the paths so that they are equal. And lastly, it needs to find the shape index to make sure that the starting point on the start path aligns with the starting point on the end path. All of these steps require some pretty intensive calculations. So what we can do is get Morph SVG to do all these calculations in advance, and then we can feed the proper strings into the Morph SVG call. So let me just do this. Inside of this Morph SVG tween here, I'm gonna type in precompile and set the value to log. Now when I run, 
you're not really gonna see anything different, but I'm gonna open up my console and you're gonna see that we have this pre-compile value here and we have an array that has string values for the start and ending shape. So this is the information that's gonna be used in the D attribute of those shapes. And I'm just gonna copy that entire array. I'm gonna go back to my file here and where I have that log value, I'm just gonna pass in that array. Now, arguably this could make your code very long and a bit troublesome to read through, but in rare situations where the processors are struggling to do those calculations, um, it's really nice that you can just punch those values in, and then the next time you run the animation, all that will be done up front, and there won't be any stutter. Now, I have a fairly fast machine. This tween isn't that hard, so you're not gonna notice any different here in this demo. I just wanted to show you how you would actually use this feature. And there may be times that your SVGs are so complex that the CPU just can't handle all the calculations. In those cases, you can render to Canvas. Check out this demo. You'll see that I have an SVG of a heart here. And when I hit play, it morphs to a star, into a thumb, into a rocket, into an apple, and then into a plug, and a few more other things. Using GS Dev Tools, I can scrub through there, as you would expect. Now check out the code. We have a typical timeline being built, and we just have a series of tweens in here morphing to those different shapes. Now I want to jump over to the HTML side of things here, and you'll see that in my HTML I have this blank canvas element here. There's nothing in it whatsoever, and it's sitting right under the word canvas here on the page. And then you'll see I have the SVG where all the animation was happening. Well, I'm going to go back over to the JavaScript panel, and I'm going to take this one little line of code here, and let me just uncomment it. And it says morph SVG plugin dot default render equals draw. All right, what's that going to do? Well, let's rerun the demo. And by only making that little change, voila, we now have that animation being rendered in an HTML5 canvas as well. And it looks identical to the SVG version. Let me pause that. All right, so this default render allows you to specify a function that's going to get called on every update. And that draw function looks like this. It basically just takes that SVG path data and converts it to native Canvas drawing commands. For a little more detail on how this works and all of these tips, check out the Morph SVG docs. They're loaded up with plenty of information to help you morph smoothly. Happy tweening.